We're going to go home shopping in this video. I'm going to take a look at some new listings, uh, specifically for Clackamas County, right around that average price point. So listed 500 to 600,000. I'm going to show you what you're going to get in that price range. We're going to go over about a dozen different listings, mostly in the northwest corner of Clackamas County. And we'll start with a little bit of news. Uh, there's a few things going on uh, in Portland recently that kind of struck me here. So I'm going to start with that first. All that starts now. All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, first thing recently here in the news, uh, camping. Uh, the camping ban has been um, in the news quite a bit uh, over the past six months or so uh, since Portland decided uh, to have a camping ban. Right now, what City Council has been uh, discussing is, as you can kind of see here, uh, an ordinance 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. banning camping uh, on public property. The city council was set to uh, vote on this uh, this past week, uh, but uh, have pushed this out, um, I think, until next week. And uh, if they decide uh, to go forward with it, this will start uh, July 1st. Now, this is kind of a big deal. As you might know, uh, Portland has had uh, some trouble with these things, with people camping, uh, with trash, with crime. And uh, this has led to this headline that you can see right here, Portland's sixth fastest shrinking big city in America since 2020. So a lot of people have fled Portland. Where are they typically going? A lot of them are staying in state. They're going primarily to Clackamas and Washington County, uh, which, is, which are two of the three counties that make up the Tri-County area, Multnomah County being the third county. That's where Portland is, Portland proper. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, staying in state, they're moving to Central Oregon in Deschutes County. So a lot of people um, in Portland, you know, really feeling the effects of um, policy over the last few years. And so good to see uh, some changes being made because uh, it, it, a lot of people watching this, you know, are not from Portland. You're not kind of familiar with uh, Portland and uh, the, the layout and um, kind of the vibe of Portland. Uh, we have a lot of great suburbs that surround Portland and a lot of people that like to, to travel from those suburb, suburbs to Portland for a blazer game, the waterfront, events like the Rose Festival, one of our biggest events on the waterfront every year. People in the suburbs, Washington and Clackamas County, have been traveling downtown Portland less uh, over the past couple of years, you know, citing concerns over safety and trash and, and things like that. So this change, uh, hopefully uh, one step in the right direction um, to rebuilding downtown, getting people to coming uh, back downtown and reverse uh, this trend of uh, Portland shrinking. All right, next thing uh, that uh, has really kind of struck me recently has been the heat. I just took the screenshot a couple days ago. Uh, every, every time I open up the weather app on my phone, I keep expecting to see rain in the forecast, but I never see it. So I decided uh, to look up this past month and see here uh, how much rain we've had in this past month. And this is what I found. One day, May 15th, we had about an inch of rain. No other rain listed the entire month. Overall, May of 2023 uh, was a relatively dry month. And this is uh, according to the National Weather Association for Portland, Oregon. Um, the wettest day was the, the only day, uh, May 15th, uh, of which we had rain. So the reason why this is a little bit of a concern is back in 2020, we had some pretty bad wildfires. I've lived uh, in this area my entire life, and growing up, we never experienced wildfires that were close enough to Portland where you actually saw or, or smelled or you know experienced wildfire smoke. And the smoke was so bad back in 2020, a lot of people, including us, left. We went to the Oregon coast, which is about 80 miles uh, west of us, for about three days. My wife was pregnant at the time, so didn't feel particularly healthy uh, to stay around uh, with all the wildfire smoke. And so this um, it mentioned, uh, this started uh, July 5th. But this kind of really started to get bad throughout uh, towards the end of the summer. And so the reason why this is kind of concerning now is having this much dry weather early on, this early on in May, uh, looks like we're gonna have a really dry summer. And so if we do have problems with fires again, uh, the only thing that's gonna stop these fires is rain. You know, the, the Forest Service and fire departments can only do so much uh, to slow these fires down. They, they definitely can't uh, stop them. So um, I hope that we don't get to a point this summer where, where we're begging for rain. With that being said, 
uh, you know, th uh, this weather has been uh, incredible. Uh, and a lot of people definitely enjoying the weather, but a little bit scary uh, going forward to, to see what happens. All right, here's, here's the next thing um, that uh, has been in the news recently in Portland. Here's the headline here, after six women found dead, Portland officials warn against serial killer speculation. So I haven't read too much on this. This is new, kind of. Uh, people recently began speculating about this. And uh, I guess uh, the, uh, official, uh, the official messaging uh, from uh, uh, the people investigating this is that there's not enough of a connection to, to speculate that this is a serial killer, but a lot of people are doing that. So um, if you're one of those uh, true crime people, if you like, uh, crime documentaries, uh, podcasts, I know those are huge. Uh, this might uh, be a little bit interesting to you because we don't hear about stuff like this uh, very often. And uh, w just one thing I've read about this, one thing that people pointed out, um, there's some similarities, uh, and, and, and that's the reason why uh, there's been speculation that this is a serial killer. It's all been women, um, I believe all under the age of 40. Uh, they were typically like homeless or transient type people, people that didn't have uh, stable or consistent housing. And uh, what has sort of been striking that, uh, about this case that, that I've read is that uh, these people that uh, apparently have been murdered uh, were found pretty far away from where they typically hang out or where they typically live. So it, 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 people are speculating that, uh, they, that the bodies have been moved, you know, from where the actual murder took place and that the serial killer is placing these people in different jurisdictions, making it dif more difficult uh, for investigators uh, to, to, to investigate this. You got a bunch of different jurisdictions investigating rather than, than just one. So um, a, a few things uh, to lead people to believe that this might be one person doing that. All right, so enough with the news. Let's get into the real estate market. I've taken um, mostly just sorted through the newest listings. I'm looking at Zillow uh, because I like the interface of Zillow. A lot of people use Zillow, Redfin, or Realtor.com. Us realtors, we typically use something called a multiple listing uh, service um, that gives us more information than you'll find on Zillow, although some of that information is private, so I don't want to share that with you, and uh, it just doesn't look as good. The interface, the, the user interface in our multiple listing systems is very clunky. All right, so uh, Clackamas County is a, a massive county too, by the way. Multnomah County is just right here. Washington County is over here out west kind of about as big as I'm scrolling my mouse right here, um, just a fraction size of Clackamas County. But as you can see, we're just gonna focus up here on this northwest part of Clackamas County. This is what would consist of kind of the Portland metropolitan area. So Milwaukee, uh, Happy Valley, Lake Oswego, Clackamas, Gladstone, Westland, Oregon City, uh, Wilsonville. We'll, we'll, I got uh, one home in Canby as well. I'm just gonna go through about a dozen different homes. Again, in that average price point, which is 500 to 600,000. Talk to you a little bit about the homes and uh, what the market is currently like. It is still competitive at this price point. Once you get beyond 600,000, kind of 600 to maybe 800,000, what's considered like a move up type of property, um, a, a property that some, somebody would move to after already owning a home. So, so like this being like their second home where you move, they call it move up because usually you're moving into a home that you need more space for because you're having something like a kid. Uh, so this, uh, this would be a, more of a starter home, three bed, two bath, 1400 square feet in Milwaukee, listed at 579,000. This is a very, very popular type of home, not only for retirees, but also for millennials. So there's a lot of buyers for this type of property, uh, which is a ranch style property, uh, probably built sometime mid-century. A lot of these homes are gonna be built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s in this area. Uh, this one happens to be built in 92 though, on a quarter acre, so a larger lot. Not too uncommon for Milwaukee. Uh, you will find uh, slightly larger lots uh, in this area. And a lot of these homes are going to have, as it mentions here, modern upgrades. So this is what, uh, this is really probably pretty typical for kind of like a mid 500s home that you'll find in Milwaukee, around three bed, two bath, 1500 square feet. Next home, also going to be in Milwaukee. Uh, these are sort of just sorted by most recently listed, not really in any particular order. Uh, so if you're somebody that, uh, like most people that are probably watching this, that are shopping on Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com, looking at new listings, uh, you may not have seen some of these yet. This one's been on Zillow for five days though. As I'm shooting this, uh, this is a Tuesday. If you don't know, most of the new listings tend to come on the market on Thursday or Friday. 
so that people can view the homes on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday when people can typically get away from work and go to our house. So expect maybe a few more listings hit the market uh, in the next few days uh, as this is posted. But this is a good one too. Like I mentioned, uh, you've got a, a lot of typical updates here, but this is a good one because this has something very popular a lot of people like these days, which is having some sort of additional unit, additional dwelling unit, shop or shed, something with electricity that uh, uh, you can use as like a workspace. This one doesn't necessarily look like it was maybe used as a workspace, but having a separate unit uh, that you can do whatever, use as a shop or use as a workspace in very high demand right now. So this one's listed at 539,000. It's a three bed, just a one bath, 1,275 uh, square feet, <coughs> built, in <coughs> built in 1944. Again, pretty typical uh, for price point and what you might find in Milwaukee. All right, next uh, we're going to Oregon City. Refer back to our map real quick here. If you're not sure, Oregon City gonna be right here, about 25 minutes uh, south of Portland. At least uh, downtown Oregon City, if you go up to the top of the hill, you're gonna be a little bit farther than that. So here you have a three bed, two bath, just under 1,900 square feet listed at 595,000. If you've heard me talk about Oregon City much, uh, one thing that I do say about Oregon City is that if you want a home that has a, a little bit of a, a larger lot, you're gonna find a lot of those in Oregon City. And this one's no exception at 0.48 acres. Uh, an acre is about 44,000 square feet. So that's about 22,000 square feet that this home is on. So that, that's a very large lot. Um, new builds these days, like new construction, you know, those homes that have like the really just small square lots, uh, usually about 5,000 square feet, uh, if you don't know for point of reference. So this home uh, looks like it does have some updates, not totally updated though, but uh, this is about what you would expect uh, from Oregon City, getting closer to, to the 600s, three bed, two bath, larger lot. Next, we're gonna to move to Canby. Canby is gonna be probably about as far uh, away from Portland. Uh, Portland is always kind of the thing that we keep proximity to, is, is anything here on the list. This is a, a more of a rural area. It's a farming town. It's known as the Garden Town. Great little community, especially if you want something that's a little bit more rural. And by the way, if you're new to this channel, welcome back. My name's Seth Marchant. I'm a licensed broker in the state of Oregon. This channel, Living in Oregon, is designed to give you more of a feel as to what it's like to live here, what the real estate market's like here. And it's designed for people that are thinking about moving here. So if you're that person, if you're thinking about moving here, if you, if you have questions, if you wanna take the next step, you can call us, text us, email us. All the contact information is below in the description. You can even click the link below in the description to jump into our calendar and schedule a Zoom call with us. All right. This is listed at 540,000, four bed, three bath, 1,642 square feet, built in 1999. Pretty typical of, of what you would get in Canby. There's a fair amount of new construction there. So you can find a fair amount of homes that were built in the last 20, 30 years and, and, and brand new. Not quite as much mid-century as you might find in Milwaukee. This picture pretty, pretty, pretty much sums up a lot of what you're gonna see in Canby. A lot of suburban, uh, sort of surrounded by rural. See that horse right down there. If, uh, if you're in a suburban area and uh, you've got a neighbor that has a horse, you might live in Canby. See a lot of that in Oregon City uh, as well. Next, uh, I have a place in Lake Oswego and uh, I chose this one um, because you're not gonna find too much in Lake Oswego or West Lynn, mm -hmm. under 600,000. So this one is a four bed, two bath, 2,200 square feet, listed at 549,000. When you see that size, 2,200 square feet, and you see four beds in Lake Oswego at mid 500s, uh, without even looking at the property, I'm gonna assume that there's gonna be a fair amount of deferred maintenance. It's gonna need a fair amount of work. When we do look at the property, you can see probably does need uh, a roof. Beyond that, um, doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. Uh, probably just has some deferred maintenance. So might need a little bit of money into it, but I wanted to show you this property because it is possible for you people that want to get into Lake Oswego or Westland, which are two of the most desirable suburbs uh, in all of the Portland metropolitan area. It is possible to do around that average price point. You're probably just gonna be dealing with something that's gonna be a little bit older or a little bit smaller, maybe have a little bit of deferred maintenance, uh, but it can be done. And the next house uh, is also in uh, Westland. I did sell a house in Westland uh, a couple months ago around that average price point. You won't find many 
uh, at any given time, there's usually just a couple. There will be a couple houses in Westland or Lake Oswego that fall within kind of the average price point for Portland. So this one, 599,000, three bed, two bath, 1,894 square feet. This isn't a great location. Um, like I said, one of the most desirable places in the Portland metropolitan area to live. Looks like it's got some updates. It's in good shape as well. Been on the market for 19 days, so kind of right, right around that point where uh, you might be able to have a little bit of leverage on the seller and ask for some sort of concessions. This is a great shot right here that gives you a feel for the area. Great shopping right down there, market of choice. Other side of the river over here, uh, this is I-205 right here. On this side of 205 is gonna be Oregon City. Over here is going to be Gladstone, and if you keep heading this direction, you'll get to Milwaukee. Off kind of in the distance there is uh, getting towards Happy Valley. Next, uh, uh, we have another one from Milwaukee. Gonna find a higher concentration of homes around this price point in Northwest Clackamas County uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, real estate does tend to be a little less expensive in Milwaukee, although I will say Milwaukee is an excellent value and has been probably one of the most popular uh, zip codes in the past five years. Not necessarily the past couple years, but the past five, six, seven years. And the reason being is because you can get to Portland, as you can kind of see from this map, in like 10 minutes. And quite frankly, if you go anywhere north of this, this is the border between Clackamas County and Multnomah County. Real estate right here uh, has been historically very expensive. This is a great area, Selwood, Moreland, and just known as, mostly known as Selwood. And then anything southwest, uh, so southwest, southeast rather, Portland over here, um, it does tend to, the prices tend to jump up quite a bit. That was before 2020 and everything that happened with the pandemic and all the you know things that have come along with that and all the problems Portland has had over the last couple of years. So it's a different story now. Um, but if you went back to like 2020, 2019, 2015, you know something like that, a lot of people were really looking at Milwaukee that wanted to be close to Portland and not pay those Portland prices. So for that reason, uh, Milwaukee has been very popular. This one, three bed, two bath, 1,342 square feet, listed at 525. Uh, 5,000. Good size lot here, almost a quarter acre, built in 1992. Uh, looks like you're going to have uh, uh, maybe a few updates here. Uh, probably uh, pretty decent shape, probably not too much deferred maintenance. Just been on the market for 10 hours here. Next, we're going to go to Gladstone. Gladstone, little tiny town. Um, you might as well think of it as Clackamas or Milwaukee. It's all sort of synonymous. Uh, but Gladstone, probably uh, uh, off the radar for you a little bit too. Three bed, two bath, just under 1,500 square feet, listed at 515,000. 7,000 square foot lot, built mid-century. Looks like this one came back on the market. So this one looks like it's, for the most part, pretty much updated. Again, Gladstone is a very small area. Um, you're gonna do kind of most of your shopping and stuff like that, and, and like in nearby uh, Milwaukee. But a lot of homes just like this, in good shape and uh, reasonably priced. Next, we'll go down south uh, on the I-5 to Wilsonville and get a two bed, two bath. Don't see too many of these, two bed, two bath. Again, I just chose this house because uh, it was recently listed. Uh, 2,200 square feet, 549,000, built in 1973. And this one is in the community of Charbonneau. Charbonneau has made our list uh, for a few of our other videos, uh, most notably um, our best places to retire in Portland video. So this is a great retirement community if you're not familiar with Charbonneau. Have another one in Wilsonville, three bed, three bath, 1,833 square feet. It's gonna be newer, built in 2018, listed at 598,000. So this is kind of what you get in Wilsonville. If you want something newer, want something that uh, has three beds, maybe an office, I would imagine this one probably does, they typically do. This is built uh, in Villebois. Uh, Villebois is a master planned community. It's been mentioned uh, in quite a few of our videos, uh, especially when we go to Wilsonville. Great community, uh, great area. Definitely check it out if you're not familiar with it. Not much to, to dislike about it. That area can get a little bit congested, but if you want to get in a really walkable area close to shopping, uh, uh, up and coming, growing area, lots of new stuff, everything you can want, all the parts under 600,000, you're going to find a fair amount of stuff like this in Wilsonville. Next, uh, we'll go back to Oregon City. Um, so you can find a, a four bed. We have a four bed in this case, three bath, 2,048 square feet. 
Oregon City, built in 2009, just under 600,000. Listed at 585,000. Now this lot, if you're wondering, because it is in Oregon City, I mentioned the bigger lots there, I think this one is just uh, about a 5,000 square foot lot. So just a, a regular sized lot. This one, uh, I believe this is gonna be up at the top of the hill. I mentioned you can get to Portland uh, from like downtown Oregon City in 25 minutes. This location is probably gonna be closer to like 35 minutes, but you can find a fair amount of four beds, a newer homes in Oregon City, kind of just under that 600,000 price point. Um, next, uh, Wilsonville, this is actually, uh, looks very, very similar um, to this pre previous house we looked at here in Wilsonville. This one says that it is a, a David Weekly energy efficient home. David Weekly is a, a great uh, builder here that builds quite a few homes in the Portland metropolitan area. Again, same thing, although you do have four baths here. Four bed, four bath, 2,300 square feet, just under 600,000 in Wilsonville. And then finally, uh, we have one in Gladstone. This one caught my eye. I actually listed the neighbor's house, uh, a couple houses down, uh, just over a year ago for this exact same price, in fact, at 400, 449,000. It's four bed, three bath, 2,263 square feet. If you're curious how that went, we accepted uh, an offer within a couple of days, had uh, maybe 20 offers or so, had a lot of offers, accepted at 620,000 and we closed at 608,000. Built in 1972 uh, and that property, the layout and the size was uh, almost identical to this one. All right, so that rounds out the list. Uh, I hope that kind of gives you a feel for what's currently on the market, kind of in Clackamas County. Um, if you're thinking about moving, if you're thinking about taking the next steps, if you have questions about moving to the Portland metropolitan area as a licensed broker in the state of Oregon, I'd be happy to help you. You can call, text, email, or click the link below in the description if you want to schedule a Zoom call with us. And if you watched uh, this entire video, if you've made it to the end and you want to see more videos like this and see what it's like to live in Portland, stay updated on the news and the real estate market in Portland, make sure and hit the subscribe button and tap the bell. And if you like this video, give us a like, it lets us know we're doing a good job. Feel free to comment in, we'll reply back. And until next time, take care everyone.